Hello everybody and welcome back to the Refresh Point. My name is Ben and as always I'm joined by my constant co-host Steve. Steve, how's it going? I'm feeling good. We're uh, definitely in the uh, full on in the dog days of summer. So we're, we're in there. Dog days are beginning. They're not over. In fact, they've just begun. Yeah, we're <laughs> definitely in it for sure. It is getting uh, uh, very uncomfortable here in Texas. So let's stay inside and play some White Schwartz. Let's stay inside and play some White Schwartz. With the spring season properly over, I've got some judge stories to share about my first time judging a big regional event, you know? great times watching people just absolutely fuck up like almost every single possible white shorts interaction and just being like hey 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 don't do that don't do that don't nice do that. nice <laughs> the bushiro tcg strategy presentation wrapped up earlier giving us a small preview as to what may be in store for english weiss which spoiler alert is like nike which I will contest till like my dying days and re-zero, yay! <laughs> uh, and our ambitious deck segments makes its glorious off-season return. So go ahead and shuffle your decks, tab or cut. And we'll get right into the refresh point with some breaking news. Goddess of Victory Nike, as I've been told, uh, re-zero and a book set are all coming down the pipeline and um, Nike was confirmed for multiple languages. ReZero, I'm not sure if it was confirmed for multiple languages, no. But if English doesn't get it, I know some people would literally lose their heads. Yeah, I mean, all three of these seem like they're primed for the second, you know, for, for later English release. A lot of times that's the way Bushiroad likes to run things is, you know, they'll run it through Japan and then we'll catch we'll catch it, you know, six to eight months down the road. So I think uh, I, it feels like they're leaning a bit hard on the not anime uh, <laughs> of late. <laughs> Why Schwartz, famously a gotcha and VTuber game. Yeah. <laughs> it does kind of feel that way. <laughs> but, you know, whatever, you know, whatever is going to line the pockets with the thickness that they require, <laughs> that's that's what we're going to get. So that's what we're going to get. Nikkei right, got us yes. a victory. Welcome to White Schwartz. All right, all right. All right. My prediction, and I'll say it now, knowing absolutely nothing about the set, it's going to be another one of these 180 card mega sets with that have no meta deck whatsoever. I hate to no say it. No meta deck whatsoever. I hate to say it. Okay. Like, just get, no, ready, for, get ready for Acer Lane slash any other boat thing again. I just, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah, okay. We'll see. We'll see. Hall I've won if it didn't have Marine. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty yeah, much. pretty much. Uh, the JP ban list is incoming. After we record this, it's about two weeks from now, three weeks from now. Yeah. Uh, Second week we, of July, I believe. Yeah. We'll get a JP ban list. And, you know, if we get an English one, I'll eat a very, very hot chicken tender. <laughs> yeah, uh, it'll be interesting to see what comes out of the JP ban list. I think there's some expectations from their fan base regarding some of the Japanese only extremely difficult to manage mechanics. But overall, I'm not expecting much. Right, right. Um, Off-season tournaments-wise, uh, we won't be going because it was too soon. But uh, the boys in Cali will be having a $1,000 tournament. Ooh, mixed JP, English format. J both ban lists in effect for both, uh, both languages, essentially. Uh, as well as uh, incoming... I, we've, I've heard down the pipeline that some people in Ohio are also organizing a tournament in August uh, open to more cross-regional plays. So uh, those are coming in hot. It'll be cool to see in these kind of mixed JP English tournaments. You know, what what's coming out on top? <laughs> a Avatar. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong, but <laughs> I don't think the Cali boys like Avatar that much. I think enough of them like Avatar. It's played enough. I feel like it's just gonna be. It's just gonna be Gura. It's just gonna be Gura. It's just right? gonna be Gura. It's just gonna be Gura. Hendrickson. I don't you know. know. Maybe. 
You know, because it's weird to think about this, 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 uh, um, the cross meta, the cross meta yeah. that's not legally possible. Yeah. You know, the mixed JP English Neo standard thing. I would say that also, <sighs> it seems as though Al Buddha's got a lot going on. Yeah, Bunny Girl's got a lot going on. Miku from Quince Premium is. You know, Icy Tales are in vogue in JP right now. That's Even true. with the death of Aki, like, we've got Freerin, so many. we've got Himmel, we have Albuda has one, you know, Miku's coming in hot, and Project Sekai, he, he's been here the whole time already. Like, Icy T coin flipping the game has never been so popular. Yeah, we're at an all-time high for letting the game decide itself rather than you deciding it, but... I don't know that anybody is particularly upset with that uh, because they keep running it. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. We just for can't sure. get enough of the indeterminate finishers that may or may not be good. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, we'll see. I would have loved to go to the California event. Um,. But it's difficult to. It's a little hard to. Difficult to get to California uh, on the on, on a two week on notice. The discount. Yeah. yeah, it's uh, it's pretty it's pretty expensive. But yeah. I'm sure that will have great turnout. It's for the it's I'm I mean it's not an insignificant price pool. No, know, it's a it's a very pity packs. It's a great great like price all pool. sorts of stuff going on. It's gonna be a cool event. Yeah. Good uh, luck. Good luck to those guys. Speaking of interstate events, interregional events, we had the Oklahoma tournament. Well, the once a yearly ish one stop anime tournament where uh, Steve and I both lost to the eventual winner, Harrison, playing Maigo. Yeah. Upgraded Maigo. Take the Maigo trial deck, put in like the good Bang Dream cards alongside the trial deck cards that were already good, and that's the Maigo deck. Right. So. Which is, to be fair, o oversimplifying it a little bit, but. No, I, I think that's. that's like a, I think it's essentially what we're talking about. Yeah. The store in Norman, One Stop Anime, shout out to those guys. They host probably bi-annual sort Is of... Is it? It feels that way. Yeah, I, I'm it not sure. It feels like I'm there a couple times a year for regional play uh, for Oklahoma and Texas and the other states around. And Arkansas? Yes. It's players always, from Tulsa coming down. Do they have players? Yeah, Harrison was one of them. Oh, I don't know how big their community is. I, I don't think it's I'm not sure you know it yeah I know that he listens to this podcast so yeah if comment, you listen to yeah. this episode let us know how many Weiss players there are in Tulsa I know at least three were there that's cool. from for the, that that were playing I don't know that they have a local scene specifically but yeah I well you know, in any case I don't live in Oklahoma I don't know <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> In any case, they're always great hosts. The prizes are always good. They are I very... I think we both cracked SPs or higher off of our pricing. Yeah. Just, you know, so very lucky stuff. <laughs> we, had a, we had a great time like we always do. Uh, unfortunately, couldn't couldn't, uh, couldn't pop the win. I get to I get to be the bridesmaid again. So <laughs> that's okay. I don't think you can complain too much. No, I'm, who's you complaining? Had, you had the good luck, the very good luck at yeah. the start of the year. And now we're like... We're still topping a lot anyway. It turns well. out I I think I might be all right at this game. <laughs> same, same. I'm not 100% sure. I took review for fun because I didn't... You cyber bullied me into this event. Yeah. You, you, I, I, yeah. I, I got home from Chicago and I was like, I don't really want to play Weiss Schwartz that much at all for a while or leave anywhere to go anywhere to do that sort of behavior. And, and you were just like, all right, Ben, 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 Ben. I'm driving. We're gonna go to Oklahoma? Yeah? Yeah? Uh, yeah? Uh, yeah? And I was like, okay, but I'm just gonna play Review Starlight and probably go X2 and then go home. Now then, instead, I went X1 in Swiss and then I looked at, uh, I looked at my opponent in quarters and I was like, I'm rooting for you, man. Like the difference in pricing from fifth to eighth and like up is like two extra packs. I already have a box. Like there were 35 people there. We got pretty good pricing for top eight. It was incredible pricing. Insane pricing uh, for top eight for sure. We also got like a poster. Like they have all of the old this old white stuff. Yeah, like yeah. the old promotional material. You literally cannot find this stuff anywhere on the earth. 
it's just and they're in pristine condition they were never hung up so that's kind of cool to have if you're one of those people that likes to collect some of the memorabilia from the game which so i just look at this guy i'm like you know what like i'm just gonna i'm gonna play but like you know all you dude like this is like i'm not i'm not super gunning for it here and i ate 10 he's playing like two soul slime i ate 10 uh casually like turn two i'm like all right it's happening and then something that my deck had you know you know it feels like it doesn't do that often but that day it did do often enough uh i got to like two five and i was like okay i have a deck it's kind of compressed we've died here many times before but this time i'll block and then he put down double benny maru and a guy and i like quad blocked him yep. and then killed him yep and i was like huh neat um it's great feeling yeah it sometimes it just works uh into the eventual winner uh the mygo player as it turns out i was worried about because i'm playing the standby maybe it's hard to play the level two combo for door at two to like deal with level three threats and then do the finisher later at three and having now played a mygo player twice i can confidently say that those is fears problem. are bullshit <laughs> oh. that shit's easy as hell okay i did that shit every single time and like he had a really good block uh whenever we were fighting against enemies like he's able to take a burn to keep his clock compression and then refresh counter for joy uh and so he just like blocked out my essentially triple marine because my hikari went early so i had to set up triple karen instead which right. i did so yeah. like all's well and done but he got me down and i was like you know that's the life uh but as it turns out level three slayers are still good into the level threes yeah you getting to top eight is a skill-based activity winning a tournament is both a skill-based activity and you kind of need some breaks to go your way so i can confidently say that i felt like i had a number of breaks go my way in the semi-final in the top four i opened four climaxes there are people who can verify that yeah, they saw yeah it. yeah yeah but i managed to wiggle away from it and and it's slime my work probably one of the worst matchups of the deck i of course i i just played kelly Gurup. i i had played other decks leading up to the event but we opted for comfort just because I wasn't comfortable playing the other decks. I could have played Chainsaw Man. No Chainsaw Man in the top eight, which is merciful. Yeah, we just, uh, they all scrubbed out, you know? There were Chainsaw Man players there. So I, Somebody messaged me, he was like, no Chainsaw Man in top eight? And I was like, they're all scrubs. Like, what can we say? But <laughs> Flush them out. Uh, <laughs> but I have been playing Ala quite a bit, and I thought that I would mess up too much. It's a deck that's got pretty precise lines of play that you don't want to make mistakes on so now, i will say uh talking about like flushing out chainsaw man players i definitely scammed the absolute fuck out of one of them like round three shout outs to you you know who you are yeah you, you got scammed as fuck i hit this guy with a stock swap for nine and hit four climaxes out and just executed him off the rip and i was just like you know sometimes sometimes lucky <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah, absolutely. Congratulations to winning with my go. That's crazy. It I think it's a it, reasonable deck. I think it's just a reasonable deck. It doesn't do anything explosive. It's just I mean, you good, get early play just, healing. Just good value activity. You get a lot of value at sure. level 2 and I in the I don't last think he, I don't think he comboed after mid 1 for the rest of the game. That's and funny. I don't think I saw a climax. He just chewed on me. Yep, yep. Just gnawing just poking, on, poking, poking me, poking. Yeah. But but that's draining but, both of us of every card in hand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But but is it, but that setup gives you the kind of cards to like let you do that a little easier. Cause even like you can grip the change piece and if you can see it's not going your way, the thing still like unlike other change pieces, this two one just swings at like a twelve K. Right. So like you're fighting for board anyway, even if you don't change. Like if you're like if you can see it going bad. And if you do change, even without a climax, that's a heal right there. Like, there are absolutely two coin flips that kept the game going in a positive way from from a hand size perspective. That oh yeah, got. for sure. And that coin then, flip's the goat. I love that coin flip in that deck. Then you got one change in the second change, and by the second change, it was it was pretty doomed from that point. Uh -huh. But uh, yeah, uh, maybe next time. Dude, it, it's like we said literally, I think an episode ago. Value 
advantage engines at level two can still do well. Yeah. Uh, and finally, this this is gonna be a long bacon news because I judged, I judged an event. Yeah. In Rosemont, it was very fun. Um, I, what is it? I I kept note of some of like the funny things that happened during the tournament, where I was just like. Oh my god, that's one of the most cursed things I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> this is why I don't judge. I would be tempted to... The the intrusive thoughts would win. <laughs> the intrusive thoughts I would win. grab hold of a, a thing It'd that was win. happening and be like, Whoa, 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 whoa. Are you sure you want to do that? You need no, to no, no. Think no. about what you're doing. <laughs> no. Use your eyeballs. No. It's, See what's happening it's to funny. you. It's um, funny. I, I need to spend more time listening to, to Weiss other Weiss YouTube content because I actually haven't that much so I'm almost certain that Bean Wolf put out like some content about it but I, I may have not heard about it but he was extremely tired by the end of that tournament playing Avatar and I think we did we discuss it on air no no this is the first episode after response so he was extremely tired by the end of the day because Avatar is a mentally draining list to play well um, for like an entire tournament run and so, so much a point to the so I think it, it was in the third fourth match He has like one more card in his hand and he's fielded Sokka Tutu Azula and a Toph and At this point he and the Azure Lane player have literally traded level for level for the last three turns They're just both sitting at 2-0 and he's just like All right, hold up. We got we got the quote. We got the quote <laughs> I don't care anymore, man. I just want it to be over. Slams like the second to last card in his hand, a Sokka to the back so that we can have guaranteed five swings. Sends the Azure Lane player to level three. <laughs> Azure Lane player doesn't have anything to do with three stock at level three, really. So then it goes back to him at 3 0, and he just draws into the standby with an Azula, and he doesn't play for the Sokka. Which was correct because at the end of the game, it was revealed there were no cost zeros left in the deck after he just wins off the vanilla burn. I wonder Azula. if he knew that. He did it. Wild. He also did it. There, the two Ty Lees were the bottom two cards of his stock in that exact game. So he didn't know that he would be able to do the combo at the start of the turn. So that's why he was considering like trying to get to his Sokka instead. Because where the fuck is Ty Lee, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So some of these games are funny, dude. I saw uh, also in the finals, or I, I think it was in semis, um, a Chainsaw player let it rip into an Ari Ferretta player. Uh, one of the Clock Tower players um, who absolutely was just compressed into infinity and took after triple Aki three points of damage i mean that verifies two of which were refresh points that verifies exactly what we thought would happen in those circumstances <laughs> the math said you would just block and he did <laughs> he did he did he did I can't he confirm did. compression good <laughs> he did he guys did. compression good compression compression good guys uh lots of yeah lots of funny occurrences I feel like throughout you, the day I, I don't know i feel like you owe part of that situation to yourself letting it get that bad i mean what is chainsaw man gonna do all they i'm don't have saying a stock swap i know but all i'm saying is have you thought about just taking some damage <laughs> <laughs> just I, I think this guy had like 20 stalkers. It was like obscene how much stock this Ari Verretta player had. But shout outs to you um, uh, and to the rest of the Clock Tower team uh, as well. Shout outs to, to everybody for playing some cool white shorts. And, uh, you know, letting me witness your, your pain and suffering as it was <laughs> judging this event there was a guy that played there's a guy from ohio he played no game no life he played the rock paper scissors event and he only lost throughout the day like nine times 
out of like 40 something. I, I It was obscene. Actually, no, that's not fair. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna look up exactly what it was because it was highly funny. <laughs> If there's one mechanic I wish Bushy Road would not introduce, would you like to? While I'm looking for this, would you like to explain what the Rock Paper Scissors event is, or do you, or do you recall? I don't because it's the type of card that I would never play. You could have a gun to my head, and I would just rather be shot than play this card. <laughs> I don't like it when Bushy Road introduces like non. Weishwartz mechanics into Weishwartz and then yeah, forces yeah. the game to take like a direction that it shouldn't take because we are feel like it's in the name of flavor or whatever but what you don't you don't like oh here it is okay 29 times he played rock paper scissors event so there were two two paper wins which is a draw f okay all right so just Here, to, you, just you to, explain it again. yeah just right. to explain it so it makes sense it's a card that forces you to play rock paper scissors with your opponent however the additional condition is that you declare that you're gonna play paper and if you win with paper you draw four if you tie with paper or win with rock or scissors you draw two if you lose or tie with rock or scissors you clock the event yes now then this player resolved it 29 times there were two paper wins which is a draw four. There were two ties, you clock, two paper ties, which you draw two, and then two full losses, which you clock. And every other game, so that's what? Yeah, 22 games, he won with, with rock or scissors, allowing him to draw two cards. I think that makes sense mathematically if you're the opponent, if you wanna mitigate this card to the absolute maximum that you could mitigate it. You would just pick scissors every single time because you don't want them to win with paper and then just accept that they're going to play rock and you're going to lose and they're going to draw two cards. And then you remember that this deck is garbage <laughs> and it doesn't matter how many cards they have, they will not win. <laughs> I saw him draw like six cards in a turn. <laughs> it was absolutely hilarious. <laughs> Ah, uh, man. I don't know what to say about it, except I hate it. <laughs> Shoutouts to you, man. Uh, Shoutouts to the Ohio gang. Uh, they have some fun content on their social media channels. I think they had a... Aaron put together a good piece about uh, their records uh, leaving the tournament after they predicted how well they would do. It was very funny. Uh, yeah, I guess I am a Zoomer because I, I keep watching all the short form content that like randomly pops up on my feed but i don't go out and search out long form weiss videos like the ones we make so i guess i'm part of the problem you know that's that's really the the case here. the first step is admitting that you are the, <laughs> the problem. first step yeah. is admitting that you are the problem i'll probably watch more weiss content whenever it gets more <laughs> gets closer to the season as it is sure that makes sense but speaking of wise content that's in season, let's get into some ambitious deck building. Now then, we have been cooking a little bit. Uh, a lot of Bromeo stuff. And uh, we have one for Carmen, previously mentioned. Uh, shout outs to you. We will we'll get going on some kind of standard list. I'm definitely trying to consume the entire Y Schwartz card base, and it's very, very hard. <laughs> we are working on it. We, but, it's, it's in our queue. Also, from Billy, who <laughs> got into a very heated discussion about how much Review Starlight tends to cheat uh, in terms of card scrying mechanics, <laughs> has requested a Review Starlight list that cheats 
the most possible. The most amount of scrying and deck manipulation as you, you can get. Um, and specifically for Steve. So, Steve, for you, uh, there's a lot of cheating cards. Well, you know, I mean, luckily, can... it's going to be super straightforward. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I can definitely read. Yeah. So I'll just put sure. all those cards in. Mission accomplished. <laughs> It'll definitely. I'm sure that will result in a functional deck. <laughs> it will definitely be playable and not dog shit. <laughs> I'm definitely going to try <laughs> and build something reasonable. Uh, okay. So first off, your Guilty Gear Strive list. Pants stand by bar. Now then, it felt a it was a little difficult to cover uh, because it did not actually feel like there was many changes to be made and we kind of brought this up earlier but we didn't do a super deep dive on it we played this into a good amount of sex De bleh, decks <laughs> we played this into a good amount of decks uh slime csm atla bay dreamless here and there uh and the overall consensus is that it it's a pants bar deck that has not gained all that much from the standby yeah after after experimenting with it a bit playstyle wise and card wise it didn't it i didn't want to add any of the cards that standby bar decks play because the standby is unreliable there's only two it doesn't really it doesn't really make sense to add the ramlethal to one or some of the other standby pieces axel some of the other standby pieces you sometimes see in standby decks because quite frankly the chance of you getting a standby is is quite low you'll start to hold them as you get into the mid game because you want to get the the actual payoff from running it which is the ramlethal and to expand on that a little further we talked about the nature of the standby that exists in the in the deck and came to the conclusion that we were never standbying biken for any reason yeah uh, our level one turns were dedicated to Kai, and our level two turns were dedicated to putting out Ram early. We just never seemed like we wanted to have Bike in, or if we did want to have her, it was out prioritized by just having more deck speed and hand selection. Yeah. So, uh, what I suggested, and we haven't gotten super much playtime on. Uh, I got a few games with it, but and I think it it kind of makes sense for the deck idea in that. What this deck wants to be is the inevitable ramp, in a sense. Like, whether or not you are at level two for a second turn, the ram is coming, right? Yeah. Just like, we're standbying it out so that it will happen, or we're at level three, we can just play it anyway. But the ram is coming regardless, and if we did it at level two, the second ram will probably come soon afterwards. As long as we can finagle it, right? Yeah, and it's, it seems very doable. So, the actual standby we should be playing is uh, the one paired with, uh, what is it? The Overdrive Forever Elysion Driver from Jacko. The, uh, the gear as it is that is able to use that Overdrive so that we can get some kind of advantage, right? Um, we're this combo. It's only a one of right. We can get away with running Three or even two of this level one combo because you don't want to resolve it at one We want to resolve Kai at one Then at level two we can resolve Jacko combo if there's like pieces that we need Biking to get us the climax or testament to try to get that going or Some other piece a counter for counter play Anything we can search it with a Jacko and then, next turn, it's ramp time. Easy as you like. Yeah, and I think that makes the transition of the game state feel a bit more smooth and sensible. It doesn't feel like you have two pieces uh, fighting with each other for position. Because having Kai and Baikin jockey for position at level 1 is difficult. And 
Baikin doesn't have any room to operate at level 2. So you often feel like your standby... Baikin feels dead in the deck. So I think transitioning to Jacko makes it more likely that you'll be able to get something, ram and something, rather than just ram and three attacks for one. Yeah. Uh, we can even take some lessons here from, uh, what is it? We can even take some lessons here from the uh, the door standby Eno deck, or standby door Eno deck, in which, uh, how many helmets are you running right now? Is it two? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you could even bump that up one, or you can leave it at two, and you can have a practice of, like, stashing things in your clock with the helmet in order to get value out of it later, whether that's stashing a Ramethal into the level at, like, late one, so that at level two, you can guarantee the standby out, um, even swapping climaxes out just so that you can have access to them, etc., etc. Right. Like, yeah. these are options that we can have. Uh, which are good. Uh, other cards that I'm thinking about in this list, the Happy Chaos, because we're not playing standby besides at level two, it's kind of like, it's a zero that's good, but could be a different zero slot. I think it's, it's okay. It will be, it will be useful in very specific ways for power for Kai because his power this is also true his power stinks yeah so sometimes it will be useful to get over on spy or some other thicker defensive level ones but i found myself using the run to the back more than i thought i would that's a that's an old plus that's the old technology but it does work out in a pinch if your level zero becomes somewhat scuffed and it doesn't cost you very much so you don't need that much stock in this deck yeah so so i don't mind the happy chaos i think i think it's worth examining how the resources of the deck get spent and trying to figure out if there's a ef more efficient way to spend them for sure i don't know I don't know if you can win with in Guilty Gear with Ram without Testament. So perhaps through that lens, Happy Chaos isn't appropriate. It does cost you a resource that you could spend on Testament later. This deck feels like it has enough hand size to afford Testament most of the time. So maybe it is better to switch it for some different utility. Maybe the JC is correct. Maybe the helmet is correct something in those veins to try and improve your the jc makes a lot of sense for testament because it makes your hand size unnaturally large and it also puts cards in your hand that you don't mind throwing away later yeah the jc i find uh in guilty gear lists in general like we love having a little bit of we love having a little bit of counterplay to like funny things you know for sure we love denying reverses we love denying uh, Avatar if they're not wise. If they are wise, then everything was over anyway. But if they're not wise, you know, we can deny some targets here and there. Uh, and yeah, feels nice. Uh, and so I think unless you have any other questions for us, I think that's where we kind of stand on the list. Like Kai, Jacko, Ram trying to focus on kind of like having the inevitable ram uh like whatever happens you're gonna get the standby at level two then you're gonna have the bar right after that if you're still at level two great if you're not at level two well this is when the ram is coming in anyway and we could kind of scam around different resources to make sure we have the testament come down and do double burn wine etc etc yeah it doesn't need a level two game plan because the level two game plan is always the same it's put ram out if ram is not out if ram is out just ram yep that's it that's what we got uh which i think i think makes sense you know you got four pants we can we can go get a climax in our hand pants bar man just go <laughs> exactly uh your other list which i've been uh largely the pilot of alice gear aegis 
but not all one climax. Now, let me tell you what. The reason that all the net decks that you've been seeing for Alice Gear Ages were all one climax is because that is what the fucking set just like congealed around. Everything, to be honest, is kind of designed to try to fit just the these are the archetypes you got eight shot you got eight standby you could even do eight pants if you wanted to uh you do eight choice and uh now eight choice and eight pants i think are less so the exact like uh like the archetype has to be this right um you have there's, more room to maneuver. Yeah, yeah. And there's also a stock soul combo, which I considered. But you wanted something a little refreshing. And even if you net decked it, there's a lot of people playing the stock soul combo. It's not unreasonable. It's on attack, pay one, or get rid of the climax to check top and add to hand if it's a character or event twice. So it's like draw the, two. Yeah, it's draw two. Like, you get events, so, like, you can get the refresh event, you can get, like, a different blessing event. Like, there's stuff to like about that combo, but... Not for nothing, I love climax combos that send themselves to the waiting room prior to performing their effect, which is prior to attacking. It just makes the end deck state a lot cleaner. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But we want it to be a little more fresh than that. So, so, so. We've got the pants one combo and the choice three combo. And then we've got something set up around all of that. All right. Um, so our pants one combo, very interesting. If you have another Alice Courageous character, it is a 6K. All right, or like another two. And then uh, climax combo. Um, on its or on climax play gains the effect okay on the opponent's turn gain 4500 power then on reverse on your turn salvage and discard <laughs> see his looking at me I, I i see his look i see his look and i'm yep what the hell? so on during your turn you need to reverse with a 7k or you have a copy of the Brainstormer from Hollow Live that's like uh, uh, the Natsuo that's like rest to give 1500 or pay one rest to Brainstorm. We also have a one for one copy of Mel. Uh, so like on act, gain power, on act, uh, uh, on attack, check top, level one or higher, get stock. Um, and so the, your plus is that your fucking 10 5 1 0. Copium gets to live across the next turn. <laughs> and then we have like a standard four or more early play stock healer. You have a choice finisher, which is on attack, uh, discard two to icy tail, spicy tail, if we're going to use Shizukatsu's terminology, for six. So it's burn one for each climax revealed off the bottom six. Okay, that's pretty good. And then you even have a uh, guide that recruits it. So there's a blue three two that pays one to get the finisher onto the board and on attack, pay one to check their top and put it on the top or bottom. So like in a pinch, if you don't have the finisher, we can use this guy to get another one. And then if we are extremely lucky, we can see a climax on top, put it on bottom, Ideally get the vanilla swing now have a guaranteed hit for our icy tail for fun for funsies. I mean It sounds fine <laughs> I don't think that there's anything about it that is Just like unplayable. Yeah, what? What are we giving up for this? What's our other? What's our other choice combo, just out of curiosity? I think it's like a, like a check three combo or something. I, I can I can double check. Okay. Once what I were your results? How did how did this work out? So, because I don't own this fucking set, right. um, there's a lot of uh, simu simulation play going on, <laughs> as it is. Sure. Um, 
feels pretty all right. It's it definitely feels like a deck that can exist at like your your tier twos, your tier one point fives, which to the specifications, it is not a deck that will win worlds, but I think it's a deck that is functional right. and that can win. Um, it's kind of hard for me to look because uh, the list. I just have the list in in the simulator. That's but, fine. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, you don't uh, have to. Yeah, I was just, I was just curious because you had mentioned that unified climaxes were a major theme of the set. So yeah, yeah. Here we go. Yeah, local ice cream challenge. No, no, it's actually quite good. Um, it's uh for each other character gain five hundred on attack with the climax. Or no, on climax play, search for two characters. Your opponent picks one of them to put in your hand, and you put the rest in waiting room. So, you get a guy. Yeah. And frequently, if there's more than one copy of it in the deck, you guaranteed get the guy, and you get to compress your deck a little bit. Yeah, it's like a interesting version of on attack search, which... Well, it's on climax play as Oh, well. is it placement? Uh-huh, yeah. So you can't get screwed by something like it'll just work, uh, and uh, I guess you get you get two cards or three cards, you know. Uh, yeah, I guess I don't know. But yeah, like I think eight choice. It's really complicated to feels the that. least like forced out of all of the other like archetypes in the set in in my eyes right there is some other interactions with it but obviously i didn't look too hard because i had a job and it was to make a deck that was not all of one climax and i think pan's choice pretty reasonable people aren't getting over 10 fives at level one not super often uh no i was fighting uh i had somebody play avatar in, uh into me for it and you know, even if they got the double clock bomb, it's just like, okay, well, now your field's open. Here comes my Mel's. <laughs> Let's get some free cash, you know? How do you get to be 10-5? That's the combo for the pants. You're, you, it's gain 4-5 on the opponent's turn. And it's a base 6k. So that's a 10-5. And that's who we are. Now you don't plus, it's on your turn on reverse salvage ditch. It's only a filter. But, I mean, if you're 10 5 I guess wall, the plus is you don't die. Yeah, the plus is you don't die. Copium. Yeah. I, po I I guess if your opponent puts down three level one bombs, you just kind of... I mean, yeah. Yeah. Feels <laughs> bad. Like, uh, sounds very bad. I mean, but like... Who's going to do that? Yeah, if you're not Love Life Sunshine, who's going to do that? Even them. <laughs> yeah. I guess it's reasonable. Pro definitely not my favorite sort of mechanic, but I'm sure it's fine. The stock soul is fine. Like you can play the stock soul. It's like a good combo. But again, like you, you wanted something refreshing, and I don't think I saw Pants Choice when I was perusing the old Encore decks. And I think this list is pretty funny. I've been having a good time with it. It's basically the same gambit that CSM players make with Kishibe, where... Yeah, but you don't have a backup, really. <laughs> I suppose your backup is like brainstorming three, but... Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. But I mean, what we, what I learned at least from playing Kishibe is that it's almost impossible to remove it anyway. And the upside of this one is that you don't need three of them. It, it just it yeah just, it just works it just works just get, get a climax pants, in yeah. your hand yeah yeah it's, i don't think it's unreasonable it it's does, very funny it does sound like you better plus somewhere yeah yeah exactly somewhere else you gotta plus somewhere for I, this to work out yeah i would guess like, your zero game needs to have like high levels of selectivity because you got we got drop searching and we got reikis and we're just this is where we're at. This Brain is who we are. Brainstorm is search or? Brainstorm is salvage. Okay. Yeah. I mean. You are who you are. And you have choice. Like, I don't know. It's probably fine. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's playable. I think it is playable. For sure. Um, it's, I, you're not going to get me to argue against a 10-5 at level one. How, yeah, how, it's how are you going to reverse it? Yeah, it's super weird. But like the hard part is reversing on the offensive because you're only a 7k on on attack right you only get the four or five power on the opponent's turn but then i guess you can just side i i don't know 
Because you're not plussing anyway, right? What's, what's, what? I just don't think 7K is that difficult. Like, it's not difficult to get reverses with 7K, in my opinion. But also, but also, even if you think it's going to be hard for some reason, like, you're going to get the power regardless. And you're only going to filter regardless. So if your hand looks fine and you got to keep it alive, then you just side. Uh, yeah, I just, I don't, I don't like siding at level one. I hate it. <laughs> I guess sometimes you have to do it, but for the sake of your hand. So this is where I ended up. Uh, I fought Atla specifically. I fought some Shizu and some Muron Slime. Obviously, Muron comes under the board to deep dick you later, but you know, that's kind of where you're at with Slime always anyway. Um, and Mel still generates plenty of stock. We have the funny, we got the funny bomb, you know, the one that everybody looked at it. It's like this, this game is too coin flippy. If it's in your waiting room at the beginning of your first turn, you blind stock. And then the other effect is it mills on reverse and uh what is it acts as like a, a bomb similar to escanor from sds so it's a bottom deck bomb at a 1500 that's like if you have multiple copies you can bomb up to that level so yeah like you have answers to boards that exist and it scams you free stock like every four out <laughs> every one out of four games if you're lucky you know like yeah i mean it. I, yeah I don't see. Is it stock bomb? It's a bottom deck. Oh, even better. Yeah. Yeah. Why not send it? It's blue. It's real funny. And, you know, a little like counter synergy. Like it's another Mel target. So like you won't be able to bomb as many things with it, but it's more cash. So fuck it. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah. I you're going to be brainstorming twice every turn to try to get advantage anyway. So <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You're going to get all the money you can get. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But that's that's where I'm at, and I'll link the list, and you know, you let me know what you think about that, Romeos. You let me know what you think. Uh, and then, finally for today, a quick little spike quarter about burnout and motivation. Um, and like I said earlier, Steve had to literally cyber bully me into coming out to Okla, cause I I wasn't feeling it, to be honest. Um. Did you have a good time? I had a good time, and it was a great time. But, you know, like, leading up to it, I I was feeling the effects of playing, attempting to actively play competitive Weiss Schwartz basically every other day of my life since last July. Yeah. I think that it's one of those things that you have to acknowledge is a real consequence of trying to achieve high levels of success in anything is that it's inevitable that you will wake up one day and dread doing the thing that you like. The League of Legends players know this feeling intimately. <laughs> I think, I think there's a number of ways to approach it. Right. But I'd like to get your, I'd like to get your opinion on it. Do you think, do you think the right approach is to just, you know, take a little break, step away? I think I will say that can. even throughout this year, I have almost always performed best shortly after a break. Right. From play. Right. Uh, because it refreshes you. Like breaks are real right even from doing the things that you supposedly love right uh it was it was hilarious there was a moment last year where um i went to vietnam for a week i mean we even talked about it on the podcast i went to vietnam for a week came back like just almost brain dead you know from like the jet lag go to an austin chop challenge clutch it up just for fun almost like like resetting your habits that become ingrained, resetting your mindset, and just taking your mind off of this thing that you think about all the time for a little bit. I feel like always helps you whenever you get back to it. And it it's almost always better to take a break when you see that you can, regardless of what you're doing. I mean, like it's why vacations are important at work too, 
right and like it and you if you have a job that like you just can't get a break then yeah that obviously sucks ass you know like sorry for, for sorry for you that really sucks because you gotta have your breaks in there from the thing that you do all the time or else you're gonna get sick of it i think that most people don't view this type of activity in the same lens that they view work through but i think there is a good amount of the population that derives satisfaction from the work that they do and they feel obligated to their teams and obligated to their mission to be able to be consistent show up every time that someone needs to show up to do the thing that needs to get done and when we were when we were practicing for worlds last year there were definitely times where i knew that it was time to play and i absolutely dreaded it because you know like you said you want to take a break right but the other thing is that your your brain is going to start giving you some room to operate that maybe you shouldn't have where it's like when you're trying to get fit you know you'll go to the gym you'll work out and you'll feel good and then you'll go to the gym and you'll work out and you'll feel good and then something will happen to your routine and you miss a day and then the next day your brain is like i mean you can just chill again right and you will give yourself more room to operate than you need right so it's tricky to navigate that line between i don't want to play because i feel that it will hurt me in the long run and i don't want to play because it's really difficult and tedious and boring and i'm tired and i don't i'm hungry and i don't want to do it because it's a chore or because it doesn't it doesn't because feel it's become fun. a chore yes it doesn't feel fun right but there's some great quotes from olympians who have tried to win gold medals yeah sure. which is a, which is obviously a much harder grind in my opinion obviously this is a game there's it could be construed as a game but i think most people would would say it's more serious and there are coaches who talk about motivation at that level because you're dealing with great athletes who are trying to accomplish great things but they're dealing with the additional physical load on their body they're hurt they're hurt and they are worn out and sore and they're feeling the physical aspects of things so they talk about how it's okay to have like a garbage practice like you go in you perform like garbage you don't really know why and then you come back the next day you feel better you perform better you're allowed to have a garbage day yeah like you're allowed to be shit you're allowed to go and do the thing that you're really good at with low motivation and be shit at it that's okay because you still showed up and you executed a routine that ultimately will benefit you in the long run because long tournament play and playing when you're not feeling well will serve you in the long run but also you have to find that line for yourself and where to draw it if you yeah. flip out during a practice like become unbelievably upset for some reason like lose your whole mind throw something that type of reaction i think that's where i start to notice like we need to probably back off for a little bit usually if if there's an extreme reaction you know i think in my personal experience burnout is the kind of thing that like if you're noticing it it's already been too late and it's time to full go and stop it and relax for a little bit at least uh because i was feeling it like even before i before i went to chicago like right after new york i realized that i was super done because we were x2 as a team and we scrubbed out at 12 and i my immediate thought was thank god we can go get food yeah and not like uh i thought we had better tiebreakers oh i want to win oh i want to do this you know which is what like what i would normally think 
and, and all the other tournaments throughout the year and all that. This time was just, thank fuck it's over. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> and, and, and then I was just like, oh, well, okay, yeah, it's probably time to chill for a little bit. Yeah, and I think that, especially in the light of what it takes to win at the competitive level of anything, when you look forward and you see the trains coming, uh -huh. just like the inexorable push that's going to come at the same time every single year, and it's going to be just as hard, if not harder, every single time, then you can kind of acknowledge that for yourself and build it in where you can say, okay, I know that the second half of this year is going to be one miserable, difficult slog. Not necessarily miserable. Maybe not but, miserable, but like you know, very challenging. It'll be hard. It'll be hard. Yeah. Grinding for tournaments is hard. Yeah. I, I mean, I've literally, I've said this multiple times now. I've already committed to going to every single American regional. And, like, that's just going to be hard. Yeah, and so when I say miserable, I don't mean, like, the process is sheer misery. But what I mean is that it's not an enviable task. You like the game, but if you've ever... It's just like, if you went out to a restaurant and you ate a steak, you'd be like, this is great. Yeah. I love, to, I love steak. It's fantastic. Yeah. If I made you sit there and eat two steaks... And wouldn't let you move until you did that second steak would not be so good yeah unless i'm starving yeah for sure and so that's the type of thing i'm talking about where it's fun to go to a local and play three games and then go home it is not fun to sit and play the same matchup 15 times in a row for six straight hours yes because that part of it is required i'm sorry to say it i'm sorry to say it it's required you need to get into every, as many angles as possible because as anyone who goes to a tournament will tell you, this game gets really sloppy and angle shooty at tournaments. You will see the situations you don't see. You will see the... The game desires drama. Yes. The layouts that you get in tournament play are just nothing like your practice unless you practice every single position. Yeah. I mean, there's a reason why uh, <laughs> Billy and I took Slime to Worlds and then our practice partner is sitting across from us beating our shit in. <laughs> Sometimes. Well, and, and the other thing is like like uh like what happened with Eno, right? Yeah. Like Avis has been playing that deck for months. Yeah. And you've been playing it for weeks. Yeah. So it's not that you didn't know what was going on, but I think we even talked about it on the podcast. You get into these weird positions where you're like, I don't know. I I don't I've never this hasn't exactly. come up. <laughs> yeah, 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 it hasn't. And if you read Avis's, you know, tournament report from her win. Uh, oh, yeah, we didn't mention at the breaking news. Uh, congrats to everybody who won those five regionals that we were discussing that haven't happened yet. Or four. Because France still needs to happen. Uh, including Avis, who won after getting third. Won with Ito at the... God, which one was it? I think it was a... Be no, was it Belgium? Because Belgium was a nine person. Uh, Is it Movo? No, it wasn't Movo. There was another EU tournament. Oh, okay. I think it was Germany. Germany. That she won with Eno. Uh, because she's very good at it. And has been playing it ever since the set released. Yeah, exactly. So, not to discourage anyone from pursuing greatness in anything but there's behind the the veneer of what will inevitably su be success if you stay persistent is a, a dirty dirty slog that may require more of you than you think so it's important to acknowledge when your mental state has reached that fragile level and you need to remember that there are things outside the game and yeah, you got a whole life out there. <laughs> trying, yeah, trying to refocus that energy is is important to long term success for sure. You got to be alive before you can go win at the card game, and you have to enjoy living as well, ideally, to at least some degree. <laughs> yeah, before you go win at the card game. So yeah, for sure. I think so you that. you definitely need to be in the right mindset to win. And honestly, that's partially why I'm slightly dreading fall. 
because I've played so much review Starlight now that I don't know that I can divorce myself from it with without difficulty and like play like a quote unquote meta deck and part like of it's still the, win. Yeah, and part of it's the, the unknown, right? The unknown ban list for sure. But even if a ban list came, like what are my options then? Because we're anticipating slime gets hit and TSM gets hit and Guri gets hit. And I played slime last world. Well, now slime gets hit and it would still probably be good. Like even a propos, like, like without Shuna, Muron is still a good card. It's just not obscenely broken. Yeah, I think that that deck could operate the same, but even more importantly than that, why not just play Review Starlight? Exactly, right? <laughs> like, Review's not gonna get fucking hit. I'm. Ca I know, like Review Starlight. I'm honestly, you know, <laughs> I'm honestly not embarrassed to say that I'm a, li a lot more converted. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like it's been a full, it's been a full court press. Yeah, yeah. That I've had to hear about this stupid set for literally the last eight months. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I'm converted uh, now. Like, I think this deck is legitimately good. Okay. Yeah. Not tier S. No, never. But winnable? Winnable, for, for sure. sure. Yeah. For sure. And so maybe I will just play Review. Because, I mean, if I'm going to spend, like, the pff, fucking 4000 whatever dollars on like, tracking down every single secret that's available in the land, then... F fuck it, why not? You owe it to yourself to at least play it at one to see if it's reasonable. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Look, if the ban list comes down and like, like these kinds of decks are like back in availability, like 1K one soul decks can win and like more regularly than they used to. And like, there's not out and out obscenely broken things killing everybody. I'm playing review Starlight every day. Like that's, that's my life. Yeah, you know? I think that that, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But yeah, a little, a little bit of a, a rambly spike corner, a little, a little here and there, but you know, that's, that's what we're about today. That's, that's, that's our motivations and how we're kind of going through it. Yeah. And although my fall will be much more straightforward than your fall. Yeah. Yeah. Get a little of this guy because yeah, you just already got the, got the, got the plane tickets in mind of, Ooh, you know, like we could go to this hotel in Tokyo. We could go here, there, you know. I, <laughs> because I'm the world champion, <laughs> I'm allowed to have a different sort of fall than everyone else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I will be there for the DFW people. I will be helping in every way that I can. It's, it's a group effort. I will help push with you. Yeah, yeah, for I'm sure. I'm not going to more than two regionals. <laughs> exactly. Good luck, Godspeed. Yeah, but. yeah. So, oh, you know, you know, last thing of the day, um, just kind of, because I don't think we mentioned it, but um, before we close out, shoutouts to Long, who, after beating my face in at Duluth and winning, decided that my list looked pretty fun uh, and made his own review Starlight Pants Standby door list and has piloted it to pretty pretty nice success in his own local scene and did a few different one ofs which you know i'm not the biggest one of guy like one ofs are always contentious for me and he likes having a lot of them and he and because of that he also runs two of that profile that's discard and check the top and salvage level and so all of his one ofs are, lo are level zero so he has more access to them right. sure yeah the one that interested me the most was what I've been informed is called a Takitsubo. Takitsubo. Takitsubo, right. It's a Yuyuko that is rest, pay one, clock, clock from top, salvage a level one and lower character. And he was like, that card's the GOAT. When I first played it, I played it in all four games at my local and won all four of those. And I was like, but as a what of? It helps you in the scuff games, but as a one of, like, how do you get to it? Like, can it really be that useful? Like, do I have the money for this? Like, I, I don't know. Like, the logic feels kind of weird. Like, 1k power on Climax Plate, not nothing. You know, we can get some of these chunky zeros to be ones. Like, that's sure, but, but like, really? Is it that good? Well, seeing as I have a reputation to keep and a max ready to list to keep up, this card has an SP. 
which I now have because yeah turns out is pretty good uh shout outs to you long uh <laughs> yeah uh there have been countless scenarios now over the last few weeks of me playing this card of just like hmm well i really need to be level one and uh i don't have an i already rigged once but i have this second sumo and that's a level one combo in my clock that i'm gonna salvage right now for triple <laughs> yeah man you know there was a there was a turn at Oklahoma where I resolved double one combo, double block down to stay at one, tag it Subo Brainstormer for double one combo recursion, and just clean up the whole deck, like seven stock going into level two, just like Yeah. Easy as you like. We're here. And there are like plenty of level zero cards that you wanna have in Review Starlight. Like the climax swapper, which Okay, all right. The Climax Swapper that I've now pivoted to as well is from set two, because there is a third line of text on the Taketsubo that I did not mention. You are allowed to sacrifice a character that has bond in its text to give another character 2,500 power. Great. Now then, you'll notice that most of the movie set does not have bond. Most of the real life set too for Rinmaken has bond, but most of the new stuff, no. The climax swapper though, from real life, does say bond on it. It bonds to some guy. We're not playing that guy, but this climax swapper says bond on it, whereas our other climax swapper had no other text on it. So why not just add like effectively a 0.25 light of text on our card. <laughs> yeah, for the, for the one in 50 games where that power is both relevant and present. <laughs> yeah. I have done it once and it was very funny um, because frequently with the climax play, the Tagging Tsuba gives a thousand on climax play. So frequently it's a plus 3,500 if you would do this sort of play. And I had a giraffe. I had a giraffe on the board and I needed to climax swap already for the one combo. And then I needed two slots to play my one combos in. And this climax swapper is eating up a slot. And you know what? That level one combo over there, that's a 4K. I can beat a 4K. This giraffe plus 2,500, plus 1K. Climax combo down, clear the whole board, double one combo. There we go. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the power can randomly come in hot, I guess. I guess. That's like one out of like, I don't know, 50 plus games or yep. whatever over like three weeks. But yeah, it did happen and it was very funny. <laughs> so yeah, uh, shout, outs, shout outs to you, Yuko, who making me spend another $125 or so to keep my max rarity deck max rarity. At least it wasn't super expensive <laughs> i guess <laughs> oh, yeah, nothing. oh oh announcements at the end actually actually we have the dfw no ban list shit fest Woo, yeah just one month removed from the time of this recording about on july 13th at primal cards and collectibles 6 p.m come on down we will have no ban list, none. What ban, what cards are restricted? None of them, except for Woozer and like other joke cards that are not generally tournament legal because they're joke cards and like they're not, they're not part of the game, man. But Neo Standard, JP ban list, who cares? English ban list doesn't exist. I can't see it. Me, I'm gonna play Batman, side the gorilla, or face my wrath. <laughs> As for myself, I get to decide between the deck I love, which is Alice, and 
Uh, there's a guy in our local who has literally every broken JP deck, like all of them. Yeah, so, yeah, all of his decks get banned eventually. Um, I'm just for good gonna, reason. I'm just gonna play one of the ones he's not playing otherwise. He's got Love Life Superstar. Key. He's got Hina Logic, Bur or Merlin. He's Key. got Key All Stars. D side Traumarai. D side Traumarai, a classic. <laughs> um, just so many, so many. Yeah. So many good options. Great options. For toxicity. Yeah. And hating ourselves. You play I, IMA? I don't think Not it, for nothing, you can play IMA? I think you just slot it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got a regular deck, just slot it. No, no, somebody is like specifically building a uh, a Mume Kanada IMA list so that you can play IMA and then option select into the Mume finisher with Kanada as well. Right. Yeah, yeah. In case your opponent just gets blasted. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Makes sense. Yeah, dude. They're, they're like, people are already cooking for the no ban list tournament. I am ready. And it is open to everybody. You know, you want to come on down to Del uh, to Fort Worth and get your no ban list on. Come on down. Show us what you got. Make us hate you. You can hate us. It's all good. It's, it's one time. I'm going to go to Beckett. Just like 15 minutes away. I'm going to give them this IMA that I found in a box somewhere. And I'm going to get them to grade it. And if you win the no the DFW no ban list shit fest, you can have a graded copy of IMA. Is it foil at least? No, it's a common. It comes oh, true. It comes in SR, but I wouldn't give that to you. All right. Because well. you're a toxic piece of shit for winning the no ban list <laughs> tournament. You'd have a graded common copy of IMA. That's what you get. Fair enough. <laughs> I think we, we're brainstorming like other ones too. I think it'd be funny if we also graded an Alice and passed that in. Do we need to, do I need to bring the Persona 3 deck? Yeah. Okay. The, the ditch your whole hand deck? Yeah. To ditch their whole hand? I, I Yeah, or I could take an entire level of damage to ditch your whole hand. Oh, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> maybe that's maybe that's the move. You can't push damage if you have no cards. <laughs> Forehead. You know what? Fuck you. I can I can get cards back with my Takitsubo, bro. <laughs> the thing is, the follow up turn is guaranteed not three lanes. It's guaranteed yeah. almost. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey! If I just draw a clock and draw two playables and Takitsubo for a third character, that's three lanes right there. Easy. <laughs> a play that's both easy accomplish and common to get to. <laughs> right, but at least it will have a climax. It'll just be one one. one. <laughs> yeah. True. True. <laughs> Uh, and that is our show for today. So tune in next time after your next deck out. And don't you forget to take the refresh point. <laughs>